Upgrades. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another JBS Movie Review brought to you from the Tribeca Film Festival. This one here is called Blood for Dust, and this is directed by Rod Blackhurst. It stars Scoot McNary, Kit Harrington, Josh Lucas. And here's a quick synopsis. Cliff, a traveling salesman drowning under the weight of providing for his family and the myth of the American dream, finds himself on a dangerous path after a chance encounter with Ricky, a colleague from a dark pass. Huh. Blood for Dust is a very interesting slow burn thriller. That's the best way to put it to start off with here. As we are introduced to the character of Cliff. And we're introduced to Cliff. He's a traveling salesman. Um, within the first 10 minutes, he loses his job. and But he loses his job because of something in his past that happened that comes to light. And this event that happened in his past is an ongoing issue through most of the characters in this film. As a lot of them are part of this past event that leads Cliff down this road of him having to work for Josh Lucas's character to do something illegal because that's the crux of this film is what would you do to push your family forward what would you do to make sure your family is taken care of and that's what we're introduced of the character of Cliff played by uh Scoot is everything that he goes through to provide for his family this if you if you've ever seen a Ty Sheraton movie any one of them pick one doesn't matter at this point you've seen this plot before you've seen this movement before you've seen this plotting before and it, it i'm only finding it funny because it goes down such a worn beaten path of this type of thriller and these type of dramatic thrillers this film gives you nothing different in it, it it's a crime dramatic thriller if you've seen one at this point you've seen them all because most of them don't attempt to uh venture off of the path that all of these films go down here um i can't think of anything positive to say about this movie half of this movie was extremely boring the other half when it did pick up somewhat bit so and not necessarily on action picking up but on plot picking up for you to fully grasp exactly the dangers that Cliff is in. By the time it picks up, it no longer matters to you. That's the problem with this movie. I am confused on why they decide to pace this movie so slow in the beginning. The first two acts of this film feel like they've lasted for three hours. It is so slow moving. As we're just introduced again to Cliff, we introduced that he's on this job, the pursuit of this job. And then we get the character Ricky played by Kit Harrington, who at no point in time is believable as this character. Not, not, not even a little bit. I think that's another thing, too. A lot of the actors feel misplaced here. Um, Josh Lucas is playing like a mob boss. Yes, Josh Lucas. Playing the mob boss. Okay. Kit Harrington is playing this shady character who is willing to do or get rid of anyone he must to get rid of for the betterment of his own life. Again, not Jon Snow. It, did, it, it, just, it didn't feel real. That is the problem with uh, Blood for Dust. At no point in time does this feel, the, the characters feel real because the actors are so miscast on who they should be in this film. And I think the film struggles for it. Now, Scoot, who, again, who plays Cliff, the main character in this film, he's really good in this movie. Throughout all the bad dialogue, and there's so much bad dialogue in this movie, he still manages to try to give a good performance in this movie. It, it, this is kind of the movie where you kind of wish that everyone just dug in and decided, hey, movie's not that good. We're just going to do what we're going to do, and we're going to push through. You don't get that. And instead, we get some of the most serious performances by Josh and Kit. And neither one of them are good performances. But I don't blame them because the story's not good here. The story struggles. 
again, once we're introduced to Cliff and we understand shady instances that happened in his past, we're, we open the film with someone killing themselves. And it's, it's to do with the shady dealings of the past, but because we don't get to physically see all the shady dealings of the past, I think the movie suffers a little bit because it always hints towards an event. We're not necessarily giving you the full scope of what that event means. And because they don't give you that full scope of what that event means, you're stuck as an audience to understand that, hey, something happened. And this is why Cliff's life is now going down this path. But at no point in time do you care about Cliff going down that path. And that's a struggle point. We're from uh, Blood Blood for Dust. It's a horrible title to a movie. It's an awful title to a movie. But it is so slow. It is paced so slow that when films are normally paced as slow, your dialogue has to be perfect. Wind River is a great example of it. So I say Ty Sheraton films. Wind River is a perfect example of a movie that is paced extremely slow, but the dialogue keeps you intrigued. Here, the characters say and do exactly what you always expect them to do in these movies. And because you give us nothing different, it makes the movie even more unbearable to watch. This was not an enjoyable movie to watch, but yet and still, uh, uh, Scoot's performance as Cliff is something that you can pull from this film as being a positive. At least Cliff is a believable character. And that's highly important for the main character. At least he's believable. Granted, some of the instances that he ends up in, some of the situations that life presents him with aren't realistic, but he's realistic. So you kind of go along with the ride with him and you hope the film gets better. But by the time we get to the third act, which gets ridiculous and lends to the shoot him up, kill everybody type of ending that you kind of see coming but isn't done well in this film. Again, Ty Sheraton films, they all have this type of ending in them. <laughs> but they're done better. This one is not done as good. And because it's not done as good, you don't care even more about these characters down all the way to the end where you're kind of wondering, why did I sit through this film? And that's what I kind of wondered. Why did I sit through this film? But from, I keep on wanting to put a from in front of it, Blood for Dust, brought to you by the Tribeca Film Festival, out of a possible 10, I'm going to give Blood for Dust a 3 out of 10. It's elements there that can work. That is true. While I'm not a believer in Kit Harrington in this type of role, nor am I believing Josh Lucas in this type of role, I think the characters are there for someone to try to glean something positive out of this film. Um... The direction is definitely there for this film. But that's about it. Like, I, I did not like the score to get to the technical aspects of the film. I did not like the score. I didn't like the way it was particularly set up. The shooting, the cinematography, how the, all of that works. I was not a fan of because it just felt uh, cut, copy, paste from any film set in Texas. Or any surrounding area that could look like Texas. And you put this film in it. There's nothing that separates it from it. And that's the that was a huge issue for me. Is that there's nothing that separates it. And when again your plot doesn't separate anything, when your dialogue definitely doesn't separate anything, you're gonna have to have something stick out. And at least possibly if it was shot in a different setting, it could have stuck out. But instead we get as close to a cowboy dramatic thriller western as you could get without it being that. And that's not necessarily a good thing. But, again, this film does not have distribution yet. But if you have a chance to check out Tribeca at home, which you could possibly still rent this film, check it out. Or if you just wait for it to have distribution, then we'll update everything so you can see it. Check it out. Let us know what you think. This has been another JVS movie review from the Tribeca Film Festival. Peace, people.